Good morning and welcome to webinar 11 in the Kepware 2020 webinar series from Max Solutions. This is Dave Hammond, Product Manager for the Kepware software in the UK. Today's webinar is on the subject of OPC and how OPC can interact with databases, MES, ERP, SAP and other higher level business systems. The agenda for today is going to be as follows. First of all, we'll look at ODBC databases on the shop floor, and then we'll look at a few scenarios, starting from simple database connectivity scenarios, through to some more complex data connectivity scenarios in, involving uh, other systems rather than just databases. Uh, we'll then look at an example of a, of a typical complex data connectivity situation, and then go on to look at the different softwares that you can use to solve these problems. So who is this webinar aimed at? If you're an automation engineer who's designing or maintaining shop floor systems which involve uh, interactions with databases or external systems, this is for you. If you're a data engineer, perhaps an IT data engineer who's investigating ways in which your higher level systems can communicate to the lower level shop floor systems, again, uh, this should uh, hit the spot for you. And anyone obviously who's looking to integrate such projects in the future wants to get an idea of the way these things are done. So let's have a look at uh, databases first of all, and um, databases on the shop floor and uh, why, why they're used. So nowadays, ODBC databases, databases are seen as the de facto standard for storage locally on the shop floor for several reasons. The first one is that uh, the, the data is in a neutral format. Um, it used to be the time when historians were we used a lot on the shop floor because um, storage of data was expensive and one of the advantages of historians is they scrunch the data down to a small package size. Um, but nowadays storage is, is cheap. Um, so storing large databases is not as, uh, not as costly as it would have been. So storing um, databases which might be seen by some people as bloated on the shop floor is, is seen as a, a good thing these days. And the data is, is not, transformed into a bespoke format like some historians do, but is then uh, retrievable by many tools. It's also low cost to deploy and integrate a database. Many of the tools are free. Uh, it's vendor neutral, so it's not owned by anyone. ODBC is a standard across multiple different suppliers. Um, and because of that, there's a very wide skills base and uh, it's very widely understood in, in various spheres well supported because it's supported in Windows, but then there's many, many database integration tools, reporting tools and other applications which you can use on top of a database to turn the data into information and knowledge. And finally, it's very easy to exchange data between databases and other platforms. So pretty much any other, any other platform you'd come across, an IoT platform, a SCADA platform, a historian platform, a reporting platform, they'll be able to ingest data from a database without any issues. So it's a very good way of, of taking the data on the shop floor and archiving it away locally to make sure that you've got the data straight from the horse's mouth without it being modified and, and transformed in any way. So let's look at some scenarios about uh, database connectivity, starting with simple ones. So here we have a Database on the right hand side, we have KEP server communicated to a PLC on the left hand side. In this case, the data is coming from the database to KEP server, and KEP server is then sending it down to the PLC. So that's a very simple unidirectional data fetch from the database down to the PLC. And typically, these, this is used for downloading recipes or part build instructions or settings for the devices or settings for the machine. So that's scenario one. We then have scenario two, which is the opposite, which is data logging from the KEP server, data coming up from the PLC, and then being sent to the database for archiving and, and, uh, and storage within that database. And again, this is very, very common on the shop floor, that database will then have, the, the, will have the, the data straight from the machine without any emissions or any filtering straight from the machine. This, is, this data uh, logging is typically based upon a couple of conditions. So it could be a, a condition trigger like the, the end of a machine cycle or a part being made, or it could be based upon some time. Um, if it's based upon time, then often this type of solution would be used for 
recording energy readings or, or power usage and that sort of thing. If it's based upon triggers, it can be the end of batch, end of sequence, or some sort of uh, data being archived away for compliance or part traceability. So those are two simple connectivity scenarios. Let's look at some more complex ones. Here we have the database on the right-hand side. We have kept server on the left. In this case, we need the data going in both directions. So there's data going to be coming from the database to the PLC via kept server and vice versa. So on top of kept server in this scenario, we need some application, which I'm terming a data handling application. And the, the data handling application will be taking care of both directions. So it'll be taking data from the database and then also to the database. So it's actually handling in, in the, writing the data to a database, but also reading it back. So uh, if you're writing to a database, you then might also want the ability to have a confirmation before the machine moves on to the next stage of its production. So here we have a more complex sequenced interactions. On the left-hand side, you have kept server talking to a PLC. On the right-hand side, you can see there's different environments. You have an MES, you've got SAP, you've got databases. And in the middle, you'll need some sort of application which is able to handle the different systems on the right-hand side and also interact with kept server on the left. So on the left, we have the kept server doing the data to comms and then passing the data using OPC to this data routing application. And on the right-hand side, we'll have the different systems and the data routing application is able to connect to all of those and uh, communicate to those different systems using the bespoke comms that those different systems would require. There's also a lot more going on in this scenario than, than in, pre in the previous scenarios, because these installations are often much more involved because they're dealing with sequencing on the right hand side between the different platforms. There's data transformation and translation between the different platforms because each of them will present the data to this data routing application with a different format. And often the data is being amalgamated from the different disparate sources before it is actually then uh, moved on and perhaps archived to the database. So you can see this is a far more uh, complex scenario than the previous one. So let's look at a real world data connectivity example. So here we have uh, a number of bits of equipment below kept server, and you've got systems sitting at the business level and at the IoT level, and the data routing application and kept server. So a scenario for a complex assembly might be as follows. You've got a barcode reader, that's reading the, the part when it comes in. Build instructions would then be needed to be pulled down from the SAP system down to the PLC for the PLC to build the, the, the part. The completed signal would then be need to be passed back to the SAP system. If everything is OK, then perhaps a label needs to be printed and attached to the part that's been made. That would then need to be logged away into a database. So the database will then have a record of everything that's been made. And perhaps the data is then being sent to the IoT cloud for analysis later. So you can see there's a lot of going, lot going on in that sequence. And each of these systems is different from each other. The IoT cloud is probably from a different supplier from the SAP system, different uh, supplier from the, the database, the SCADA, and, and the data routing. So there's lots of, lots of things, lots of strands to pull together there. So how do you solve these particular problems? How do you, what tools do you use to, for these scenarios? So let's look at the first one, the unidirectional data fetching. This is simply the ODBC driver inside Kept Server. And the ODBC driver inside Kept Server is used for reading data from an ODBC, ODBC database. So that's a one-way driver from the database down to the PLC. The second one is the data logging, where you have time triggers or conditional triggers, and that's data being sent from the PLC to a database. That's achieved using the plugin from Kept Server called the Data Logger. And actually, the, the Data Logger plugin is the most common 
um, plugin that we provide to uh, Kev Server users. For the third scenario, which is a bi-directional communications, and this is ideal for two-way connectivity with databases, the, uh, the Cogent software has a, a very powerful scripting engine as well. So if you need to do customization of the data, or if you need additional flexibility on top of just uh, sending and receiving data to a flat database, you can do that. Uh, you can use background calculations and all sorts of very useful things. It also interfaces between lots of other environments, as you can see in the, uh, in the diagram there. For the very complex sequenced scenario we looked at earlier, then this is a product from a German company called Inray, and it's called OPC Router. This is a very powerful software utility, um, which combines multiple types of connectivity with a very clever and powerful graphical sequencing and logic engine. So within the OPC router software, you can create flowcharts of data. Uh, you can create rules-based interactions with the, the, inter with the external systems. Uh, you can put logic in there, and it also has a scripting and customization aspect. As I said, the configuration is graphical, so it's very easy to, to understand what's going on when you're configuring it. And when the software is actually um, in its runtime, uh, the graphical flow of data is actually overlaid on top of the flowchart diagrams. So you can see the real-time data flowing between different systems on top of the flowchart diagram. So that's very, very good software. And uh, it's ideal for complex situations where you otherwise normally have to write your, uh, some sort of bespoke package to do these interactions. Again, this communicates with Kev Server using OPC UA. To uh, recap the agenda, we first of all looked at ODBC databases on the shop floor. Then we looked at some simple connectivity scenarios for databases, and then some more complex scenarios, uh, a real world example of a complex situation. And then we looked at some of the software types that can be used. So thank you very much for attending today's webinar. Uh, my name is Dave Hammond from Mac Solutions, uh, the product manager for the Kepware software in the UK. Uh, we've been the Kepware software people in the UK since 2001. And as we've covered today, we also sell the, the Cogent software from Canadian company Cogent and also the OPC router software from the German company Inre. So feel free to contact us if you have any applications which are relevant to today's subject. And we hope that you all stay safe and well. So thank you very much.